I'm Alan Shipton and I present Jazz Library on BBC Radio 3 every Saturday afternoon at four o'clock. I think with me the jazz went in with the milk because at the end of the Second World War my dad came back from Hong Kong with a pile of 78s and one pile was classical music and the other pile was jazz and apparently when I was very small these used to be put on one of those stacking gramophones where a disc clonked down every three and a half minutes and the ones that kept me quiet most were the jazz records so when I was really uh, hardly out of nappies. I was listening to Al Hines, Fats Waller, Duke Ellington, and it's never stopped. Because I'd got into traditional and mainstream jazz very early on, I tried to find out when I was at school what I could go and hear. And I remember two or three things really stand out. In 1971, there was a big concert on the South Bank called A Tribute to Louis Armstrong. And that was the first time I heard people like Alex Welsh and Humphrey Littleton, Bruce Turner, a lot of the great stars of British jazz. And then I discovered that every Sunday they played at a pub up the road. And so I used to go over to Camberley on Sunday nights and hear many of the great British musicians who happened to be around. And that was the beginning of a love affair with live jazz. I've done a number of programmes for BBC Radio 3 over the years, including Jazz Notes, which was a sort of magazine programme, and Impressions, which was very much a precursor to Jazz on 3. But one of the things that I've discovered that Radio 3 listeners really love is their jazz records. But a lot of people, even when I was on those other programmes, used to write in and say, I've just discovered Duke Ellington, but I don't know where to start in listening to that music. So Jazz Library was a little scheme that was hatched up in Radio 3 to try and do the same for jazz listeners that Building a Library has been doing for years on Saturday morning for classical listeners. And judging by the way that people are reacting to the show, this is a really helpful function. And of course, being followed by jazz record requests, if we just play a snippet of something, there's a regular weekly opportunity to follow it up in a succeeding week by asking Jeffrey to play the full track. And that seems to be working very well as well. When we started Jazz Library, I'd just finished a couple of years working for the Smithsonian Institution in Washington in producing their new classic anthology of jazz. And so it was a fairly simple operation to take the top 100 names that that international panel had come up with and say, if we're starting a jazz library, these would be very obvious people to put in. But then some surprising things happened. Listeners started writing in and saying, you've just done a show on this musician. Well, actually, I'd like to know about that person who played with them. And so the listeners themselves have started to define the show. I think there are two aspects to Jazz Library that have been real fun over the first couple of years of the show. The first is the chance to meet some of my heroes and talk to them about their recorded works. Good example being Sonny Rollins. Now, Sonny famously doesn't like listening to his back catalogue, but actually, once we'd exchanged a few emails and started talking about what he'd done in the past, he got quite warmed up, and the conversation went into all sorts of strange directions. We talked about a lot of things that weren't on my original list or on his, but as we started, and the fact that I'd listened to his records as a huge fan for a very long time, and he began to remember sessions that he'd almost forgotten about, the whole thing took off, and that's happened again and again, meeting my heroes of the music, so that's been a terrific side to the thing. I think if somebody comes to jazz fresh, particularly if they've come from another kind of music, it can be very daunting. And so one of the things that I've tried to do on Jazz Library, and also in my books about jazz, is to try and take the music apart gently. One of the things that a lot of people I meet at festivals and concerts say to me is, I don't know what all that improvisation's about. If you've learnt an instrument at school, and you play the fiddle, or you play the piano, generally you're playing from sheet music, and you know roughly what you're going to do and how it's going to sound. If you play a jazz instrument, it's not always like that. Sometimes things can go in a very unexpected direction. And so one of the things I've tried to do, both on air and in print, is to demystify something that's actually very warm and cuddly when you get to know it.